Well, if you've purchased a laptop or a PC in the past few years, you probably have an SSD inside, a solid state drive. Hard drives were great, lots of storage, had the physical platters with the solid state drives, it's all digital memory on here. There's no moving parts. So again, faster, but the one, I guess, downside of them, uh, you know, and it's getting better, is the price per terabyte or, or gigabyte, uh, essentially. You're paying a lot more for the, uh, the digital memory on here. Today, we're having a look at uh, the latest from Samsung, and they're one of the leaders in uh, SSDs. This is their 870 QVO, and it comes in a number of different sizes as well. Starting off at one terabyte, goes all the way up to eight terabytes, which is phenomenal. We've got the two terabyte uh, version. And, uh, the speeds are pretty good on here. It's uh, 550 megabytes uh, per second uh, read speeds, and as far as write speeds here, it's 520 megabytes uh, per second. We're gonna go down to the Get Connected Lab, and uh, Steven's gonna give us some uh, number. Let's have a look. Steven here at the Get Connected Lab with some essential benchmarks about this new solid state drive from Samsung. The 870 QVO 2 terabyte has a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second interface. This makes it an easy upgrade for most older notebooks or desktop systems. One of the strengths of the Samsung 870 QVO are the larger available sizes thanks to newer QLC flash memory on board. This memory is cheaper to manufacture, making larger drives more affordable. Who wouldn't want an 8 terabyte solid state drive? Since we're more of a video lab than a computer lab, we use a lot of storage in our Atomos video recorders. These are devices that act as both a monitor and a 4K video recorder that captures video at very high data rates. One of the nice things is that they don't use proprietary storage. All you need are standard SATA SSDs that meet a certain standard. So we were eager to see if these new larger drives from Samsung could meet that standard. We evaluate drives for this purpose using three different tests. Crystal Disk Mark gives us an overall snapshot of performance like read and write speeds in megabytes per second. The next test is the AJA system test. The test gives us a good idea of performance in 4K video production workflows, especially when it comes to storage systems. It also tells us what the minimum read and write speeds are and shows any variations. This is very important to us because a drive that can't sustain a high performance can fail to capture footage. Finally, we're going to be doing a drag and drop test to see how quickly this drive writes a very large 49 gigabyte file. All tests will be performed using a GTEC Atomos Caddy Reader on a USB 3.0 interface. We've installed all the drives into cases compatible with this reader. Our focus will be on the read and write speeds and megabytes per second throughout our tests. As a quick test note, we are aware that the USB 3.0 interface used by the Atomos reader is not as fast as the native SATA 3 interface on the Samsung 870 QVO. This will only impact our recorded top end speeds, but not our conclusions from the data. For science, we'll also be testing two fast hard drives from the past. A 7200 RPM Hitachi 2.5 inch hard drive, one of the fastest before solid state drives came to the market. We'll also be testing a Kingston HyperX 3K 480 gigabyte solid state drive, which is a performance model that hit the market in 2012. Starting with Crystal Disk Mark, it's age before beauty with the Hitachi. The Hitachi lays down the baseline for us. Next, we're going vintage with the Kingston HyperX 3K. There's no surprise that it is significantly faster than the more senior Hitachi. The Samsung 870 QVO is up to bat. While read speeds are the best of the field, its write speeds are off the pace from the older HyperX 3K. We're starting our AJA system test off with the Hitachi laying down the baseline. Results aren't too significantly different than the ones in Crystal Dismark. Here's a look at its minimum write and read speeds. You'll see some high variations in read and write speeds, which immediately takes the drive off our list if we were considering it in our video production workflow for 4K. Next, the HyperX 3K is up. Read and write speeds are expectedly better than the Hitachi. And also not unexpectedly, the minimum write and read speeds are even better. The performance curves show a fairly even performance. Finally, the Samsung 870 QVO is on the run. Write speeds are significantly lower than the HyperX 3K. However, read speeds are slightly better. The minimum write speeds were also much lower than the HyperX 3K, 
and significant variations in the graph immediately disqualify it from our 4K production workflow. It does do a significantly better job in the read tests. Onto our last test, we drag and drop a sizable 49 gigabyte file onto each drive to see how long it takes. We also note any strange drops in performance that could affect our video production workflow in 4K. The Hitachi ends up with a time of 639. Speeds were reasonably consistent with the usual spin up at the beginning as those platters rev up to 7200 RPM. The HyperX 3K gives us a time of 418. Speeds were also very consistent across the board, around 190 megabytes per second or higher, with no notable drops in performance. The Samsung 870 QVO puts in its performance and comes in at 439. As foreshadowed by the other tests, write speeds are not where it shines. We noticed around 70% into the transfer, the performance dropped down to around 120 megabytes per second. Now for reference, this is as fast as the Hitachi, which is a platter-based hard drive. What conclusion can we come to about the Samsung 870 QVO? Well, we can take it off the list of drives that we would consider for use in our 4K video production lab. The write speeds simply aren't consistent enough for us to consider it. So where does the Samsung 870 QVO actually fit in? Because platter-based drives, in most systems these days are commonly one terabyte, the Samsung 870 QVO makes an easy swap and upgrade for most consumers. The larger the drive you're replacing, the more appealing the Samsung becomes thanks to its advantage all the way to eight terabytes. Size is what makes the difference here. For anyone still using a platter-based hard drive, a solid-state drive is a fantastic upgrade. It's the one thing that every computer enthusiast agrees on. But what about the write performance? Think about how much new data you write to your system. Most people will be starting their machine and loading apps. These are all operations that read from the drive. They don't write to them. And if you write files to your drive, they typically won't be the monster 49 gigabyte video files that we use in the lab. They'll be much smaller sizes that can be efficiently managed by the buffer built into the 870 QVO. We don't feel that you'll be running into this bottleneck that we discovered in any normal everyday use case scenarios. However, if you are writing massive files to your drive and one terabyte to two terabytes seems like an okay way to go, then you might want to look to Samsung's own 860 EVO or A60 Pro series drives. You'll get a lot better write performance there. So that's the lab report on the Samsung 870 QVO. Back to you, Mike. So those are the numbers. Are there faster SSDs out there? Yes. Are there ones that have longer life? Maybe. And that's the challenge, right? There's a lot of these things coming out of China and other places, but you just don't fully know the overall quality. And that's what you're getting for when you look at the Samsung uh, SSDs. This is the 870 QVO. Uh, we've got the two terabyte uh, version here. Overall, I'm pretty impressed, uh, but I am excited to get my hands on the eight terabyte.